Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome into Guess Blade episode number 40. And today we're going to be bringing out a very special R.J. Martin that was made back in 2010. And he only made 25 knives. Each were individually numbered. And they're going for amazing, amazing prices now. The last one I saw sold went for over $3,000. I'm not sure what they sold for originally, uh, but I'm very certain it was probably 1500 or less. What we're looking at is the R.J. Martin DRT, which stands for Dead Right There. Uh, and you'll understand that when, when I open the blade up. It is a very aggressive blade profile, so it needed a really aggressive name to go along with it. I want to give my thanks to Nathan Beyer, who sent this out to me. Uh, if you guys follow Instagram at all, you can follow him at NateDog351, NateDog351. And uh, Nate just kind of offered this out to me out of the blue. He sent me a direct message and went, hey, I know you dig R.J. Martins. Have you had a chance to fondle one of these? And I was like, well, you know, I'm really, really cutting back on my guest blade episodes right now because I just have too many other things going on in my life. But yeah, shit, I really need to sample one of these. I knew that the model existed, uh, but I had not ever had a chance to fondle one. And I think this may be some of RJ's finest work. One of the things about RJ is he makes really great knives. And he's known for making pretty much the best flippers in the world, period, consistently. But the little teeny tiny touches of fit and finish, because they're a completely handmade knife, sometimes they're not really uh, up to the level that his knives sell at. Now, when you're buying a Q36 for $850, uh, I think they're pretty much on, on par with that price level. But when you're spending $1,500 to $2,000, which is what they're traditionally selling for on the secondary market, you know, you could spend that money elsewhere and get maybe better fit and finish, but it's unlikely that you're going to find a better flipper. So there's a little bit of give and take. With this knife, I think he really, really, really nailed that fit and finish. Uh, first off, the titanium, which is 3 16 of an inch thick, very, very thick titanium. Not only is it contoured beautifully and just really, really, really well done, but he's also uh, milled out interior pockets in the titanium, it's machined it all out, and he's removed about 30% of the overall weight from this frame, about an ounce uh, total off the weight of the frames. So he's definitely put a lot of thought and a lot of time into it. You're also going to notice the inlays. He's using four inlays and in two different styles, but these are all going to be different types of carbon fiber. Now, I thought originally that these were G10, but as I did the research, uh, RJ himself did say that these are carbon fiber. I particularly love the large inlay on the presentation side. That is beautifully machined. I really like the way that's been done, and it feels nice, too, when you're holding the knife in your hand. Now, on this side, you're going to have an additional decorative piece here, but this one actually acts as your over-travel stop for the lock bar. Brilliantly done. Uh, he's continued the visual theme throughout the knife and then made that into an actual functioning part of the knife as well. You see that all of the, uh, the chamfer work here has been done beautifully all the way around. Unique jimping on the frame. I'll show you that more when the knife is open. It's easier to see without the flipper tab in the way. And he's using a section backspacer. So you have uh, one backspacer here. And then right back here you have a textured backspacer. And it's not really a gear pattern. It's almost like a, almost like a dragon spine. It kind of has like dragon scale look to it. Very, very cool. And it comes around and protrudes from the rear end. There is your blade centering. Perfectly done. Let's see if I can get it to focus a little better. And one of the things I love, and this is why I prefer like Quaken style knives and things like that, is the blade is completely hidden within the handles. There is no protruding blade coming out. Now in the relief cuts and the choil, you obviously see the blade sticking out. And you should be able to see the numbering right there. This was number 14 of the 25 that were produced. Now here's where things start to get interesting when you open up that blade. That is 
one hell of a grind. And he's gone, he's done a really, really deep hollow here. You would almost think by how cavernous this is that it was going to be a chisel grind and be flat on the other end to give him enough room to go in, but no. This is a double ground blade on very thick blade stock. And that's how he's able to achieve that. Now, what you're looking at here is a four inch blade, so it's a little bit smaller, uh, excuse me, a little bit larger than a, a Q36. Overall length is eight and three quarter inches. And the whole thing was just done perfect. I mean, it feels great. Uh, he is using his roller thrust bearings in here. This pivot is adjusted a little bit tight, either that or the knife just hasn't broken in yet. So it's not quite as uh, drop free smooth as his other knives are, but again, uh, I break in all my knives and I'm used to his, his blades just kind of flying out and flying closed. Now the detent on this is not as strong as you expect typically from, you know, his uh, modulators or from his Q36s or whatnot. It's still a fantastic flipper. It's just not quite as rocket fast. I'll bring out my RJ Martin. You guys know this when I've done the videos on it. Now, you might want to say, well, that's because it's a, a smaller blade, Jim. You guys know that the Q36 uh, fires just as quick and just as snappy as this one does. So, and a size comparison I guess I can give you there against mine. So you see it is quite a bit larger. Now, mine's heavier because my, my presentation side is uh, zirconium, which is a lot heavier but uh, it's a more compact three and a half inch package. Overall, the quality on this thing is just incredible. Let's give you a look at the grinds. And you really don't see RJ doing a lot of compound grinds, so I'm, I'm, really, I'm really impressed to see this. It's got a nice stone wash finish throughout. CPS, uh, excuse me, CPM S30V is what he's using for the blade steel. There is a good look at the uh, frames again and the inlays. Look at that nice clean open area there. Here's the lock up. Damn, that's sexy. I love the way that he shaped this. It looks incredible. One of the things I really liked, just the small details here, the way he did the jimping, the way that it matches, that, again, that kind of dragon scale look on the backspacer, he's done that for the jimping on the frame. And it's actually not that bad. It's not really overly grabby, uh, but it does, it does work pretty well. Very comfortable in the hands. This thing, it's like it was melted into your hand. It's got a very small choil, so if you don't have really super skinny fingers, uh, you are going to catch the uh, the sharpened back end of that uh, edge. Oh, excuse me. So you're going to kind of feel that if you have a, a finger like mine. Uh, somewhat skinnier finger is going to drop in there just fine. I got to tell you, when I feel this in the hand, Two things surprise me. The ergonomics, the way that this feels, it's incredible. And the other thing is the lightweightness of it. This is a big ass eight and three quarter inch overall knife in a titanium frame lock. You would expect it to be really, really heavy, but it's just not. So I don't know if we can really see in here that well how my lighting is. But I mean, that is a very, very thick knife very large knife and it's almost weightless in the hand especially when you've got the blade open and you've got kind of that that balance out it feels amazing and there again look at the grinds now because of the investment grade nature of this knife with so few being made from a maker that's already got a very very healthy secondary market you're probably not going to see very many of these in any kind of practical use I would love to. This is the kind of knife that I would carry all the time and I would actually cut shit with. I love a recurve. Recurves are amazing. And some people want to say that they're impractical. And, and listen, it's hard to find a better cutter um, than a recurve. Now, it's not going to be, you know, great for, you know, pushing down on something and just kind of, you know, cutting through it like a piece of sausage or something. But then again, you do have that practicality up here 
on that flat ground tip so you could very easily just slice into something and, and do that rocking motion there you just can't do it with this the center section of the blade where you would normally see the belly this is going to be great if you're slicing into something and pulling away uh, it's going to you know grab in here and then as you're coming across the blade is going to force itself further into whatever it is that you choose to cut I do like the feeling of this. Like I said, I wish it had the snappier action that we're uh, accustomed to from RJ, but it's still, I mean, this is still going to be in your top 10% of all flippers. It is really, really well done. It just feels soft for an RJ, but it's, I mean, it's snappier than shit compared to pretty much anything else out there. Lightweight, easy to carry, even though it's thick. Great ergonomics. Nice flipping action on it. A practical pocket clip. You guys know me. I'm not big on the bent clips. Yes, he bends all these clips by hand, and they're all custom. But for a showpiece like this, I would have had it maybe a third of the length that it is. And it would have either been sculpted titanium, or how cool would that have been to do a nice sculpted carbon fiber clip? But, uh, you know, his clips are, are not usually going to be the centerpiece of any of his knives. It's really about the fit and finish, the functionality. And I think on this, I'm seeing the best fit and finish I've ever seen on any R.J. Martin. So I'm, that's why I'm thinking this had to be a lot more expensive than a Q36. Just had to be. A lot more time, a lot more labor went into this knife. Is it going to be the kind of knife that would be a practical EDC? No, I don't think so. You know, this is not the kind of knife that, I don't know, maybe you're uh, out in public and, you know, you're, I don't know, maybe we went to a carnival or something and, and you've got one of those little wristbands on. You're, you would normally just whip out whatever knife, you know, boom, and cut it off. This is not the kind of knife that I would ever want to whip out in public. It just looks menacing. Now, for me, that's a plus. I love that. Uh, for John Q. Public, no. You're going to scare the shit out of most people that see that. But for a collector's piece, something that you want to pridefully show in your collection, something that you may carry on the occasion, something that I, I honestly feel, though as solid as this is built, that this could have very easily been a user-grade knife. No problem at all. But he only made 25. He made him back in 2010, four years ago. The secondary market is insane on it. You're not probably going to drop, you know, $3,200 on this knife and then go out and cut down a bunch of cardboard with it. It's probably not going to happen. I'm just kind of silly like that. I don't have, and people ask me all the time, like, they always say, well, Jim, you always mention that, you know, you, you always use all your knives, and if you don't use them, uh, you just sell them. If you're not going to carry and use it, you're going to sell it. So what are you actually using it for? We want to see you using them. A, I am not carrying around this camera with me everywhere I go, period. That's just the way it is. Uh, and B, listen, it's whatever need arises. I don't really ever leave my house being a typical suburban dude. I don't work construction or I have a job where I use my hands in that fashion. So I'm not using it as a tool for work. I'm a typical suburban guy that when I go out, if something needs to be cut, if some need arises, then I will whip out whatever knife is in my pocket and use it. But I never leave the house and start heading off into the woods to start chopping up wood. That's not my lifestyle. That's not who I am. So, you know, if, you know, when I bought uh, the, the, the new car seat for, for my car, for, for the baby, there was no way in hell that box, that car seat was going anywhere inside of that car. So I had to cut down the box. So I stood there in front of the Babies are us or whatever it was and, and chopped the damn thing down. I think I had my uh, my hoe back with me, my koe back. I use whatever's in my pocket for whatever need arises. I open up packages all day long. I'm opening up mail. I'm cutting tape. I'm cutting uh, straps off of things. That's fine. I am not a hard user, but plenty of my knives have plenty of uh, carry, carry marks and uh, you know scars on the blade. So for me, this is the kind of knife that, yeah, absolutely. I would have this in my pocket as a daily carry type of knife. And if, you know, some need arose, sure, I'd cut shit with it. But most people buying an investment grade knife like this aren't going to. And really, that's good. That's good for the fact that this is going to be probably, I don't know what Nathan's going to use it for, and he may just have it just for his collection. That means in the future, if anything were to happen and he decides to liquidate this from his collection and it goes off to that next collector, that next collector can enjoy a minty fresh knife. That's great. 
I just hope that one or two of them out there are actually getting used because, oh man, this would be fun to carry every single day. And this is the kind of knife, yeah, I'd probably throw a lanyard on it. You've got a nice big lanyard opening here. I throw a lanyard on this bad boy and carry it like crazy. I mean, I carry this. This is a much dressier uh, type of RJ. I carry this thing all the time. Being Damascus, it's, you know, super tough. I don't have to worry about really showing too much wear on the blade or anything. Love that little knife. Carry it all the time. Um, it's not the kind of thing I can use for work anymore because I did for a while and I was afraid of I'd start bending the tip over for what I do at work. So on my, my thinner tipped knives, I de definitely can't carry those at work like I'd like to. But, you know, that still gets carried on my days off. So what I think is, yeah, you got a big ass, big, thick knife that should be unwieldy. It should be uh, cumbersome to carry. But it's so lightweight and it's so well made. How do you not carry something like this? So anyway, that's just my take on it. I think it's a fantastic build overall. I think it's the best fit and finish that I've seen personally in an RJ Martin. I would love to take this opportunity on this platform to say, hey, RJ, please make these again. But I know that's not going to happen. I would love to see something, you know, it doesn't even have to be a DRT, so it doesn't have to have this blade. I would love to see him do more work with really nice contoured titanium frame locks and do inlay work again. So, you know, closing that blade up, forgetting the blade for the DRT even exists. I would love to see maybe a hybrid model made where we could get this frame, these handles, with whatever blade he were to, to choose to, uh, to manufacture. This is such... I mean, this is really a gem. I'm really, I really get excited playing with a knife like this. The quality is off the freaking charts. The creativity, the way the inlays were done, the patterns that were chosen, the types of materials, and that milling in that carbon fiber. This is really, really cool. And, you know, normally I'm not a big fan of having a shitload of screws all over a knife, but it works for this one. It kind of has this futuristic industrial look to it. You know, and obviously industrial is not futuristic, but I mean, taking an industrial type of look with all kinds of screws and hardware, and then he's made what I think is kind of a futuristic design overall in this entire knife, I think the screws work. I don't think that there needs to be any hidden hardware on this. I think it just, it works for the design of this knife. There's not really a complaint that I can make on this thing. I like it all the way around. And... All the, the edges, and the one thing that I've always mentioned on my Q36 commentaries are, you know, and that's being a liner lock, the, the hard edges on the fingers and how they would pinch and almost cut, this was done perfectly. It feels great to play with, to flip, to hold. It's just an amazingly, amazingly made knife. Now we can see inside of the uh, frames there. I just didn't have the right angle before. Just did such an amazing job on this. So, yeah, while I know the DRT will never see the light of day ever again, uh, I would hope to see this frame done with some other blade at some point in the future. Maybe even a little bit smaller. You know, three and three quarter inch, three and a half inch. Who knows? But this thing is just bad ass, bad to the bone. So, Nate, thank you, dude, for letting me sample this. Uh, Nate did send along another knife. I, not, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to do a guest blade on that because I have yet another uh, knife coming in to do that with. And I'm really trying to cut back on these right now to spend more time with my family. Do obviously do work with the business for the uh, Diamond Gems Knife Lives Project. And then, you know, my watch brand and then work. And I have a lot of things going on. So I apologize for not uploading as frequently the content that I used to, but I'm going to do my best to try and balance things out here over the next couple of months. So I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to do his other knife. I'm going to try if I possibly can. But Nate, thank you so very much. This is one of the knives that I've always wanted to experience and I've never had access to it. So thank you for offering it up and uh, for allowing uh, the, the rest of the community to enjoy this thing as well. So one final close-up look. And then we will call this the end. So skillfully made.
Whew, that could really do some damage right there. Alright guys, I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.